following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and you're joining us on another episode on Gen X by Z and this is a program where we talk about topics or issues based on the youth per se in this current context. Now today on the program I want to focus on the topic of sports. Now for the children or the youngsters out there who are on the verge of selecting whether they should follow a career in sports industry here in Sri Lanka as well. And the prominence Sri Lanka is giving at the moment to our talented sportsmen here. So to talk about this topic, we have two sportsmen today on the program. One is a national basketball player and the other one is a mercantile netball player. Let's go see who they are. Hey guys! Hi! 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 You guys have been playing already, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a really sunny day, and you're okay with the sun? <laughs> we used to. <laughs> Why don't we like catch a game or something after the program? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, I think something that we share in common is we all three of us love sports, and you're all sportsmen already. Yeah. So. What do you think is the most appealing thing to you about being a sports person? All oh, right, before we go into the discussion, I would like to introduce you all to our viewers. This is uh, Sajali Hetiarachi, who is a mercantile netball player, and also Isuru Pereira, who is a national basketball player. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the show today. Tell me, what is it that uh, is appealing to you about being a sports person? Well, um, basically, I come from a family that has done sport and has been in the sports, uh, like all sorts of sports for a while now. So it's my way of connecting with them, especially my dad. So we all have that thing in common, you know, we are sportsmen, we've done different, different sports. And yeah, that's basically my take on it. Isuru, what is it that you like about being a sports? Yes, she said me too. Uh, my family also more into uh, sports and uh, my brothers and my parents also. So because of that, I'm just uh, in sports now. What was it that you liked about basketball? You could have uh, literally chosen any other sport. Actually, I, early I played uh, cricket since under 13 and under 15 and 17. So after that, I just uh, moved to basketball uh, suddenly because uh, uh, I started uh, cricket see, uh, under 13 and I just uh, see more capability on uh, basketball as well. That's what I have just uh, moved to basketball. Alright, so both of you all were playing sports uh, in a young age. Right, okay. So when it comes to your family, you said your father and mother, everyone, they were all sports players, yeah. right? So was it like pressured on you for you also to become a sports player? Um, or is it just you? Well, to be honest, by passion? no, not really. Uh, because obviously neither of my parents had played netball but uh, when I was small I started off with athletics and um, there was no pressure at that age obviously so I feel like Tati supported me to his fullest. He must have gone above and beyond to get me for practice, get my meals sorted. So yeah, that's where it started for me. What was your experience like in uh, school when you all engaged in sports? Um, in school, in school, well... I mean, that's where we all started off our yeah. sports career, so, right? So, in school, uh, like I said before, I started off with athletics and um, went on to Colombo District. I even have two records in Colombo District for running and long jump. Uh, and then down the line, it was, I played a little bit of basketball and then focused mainly on netball because I was more into team games. How about you, Isamu? Yeah, like school time is the best time. Like, you know, everyone. Like, our teams and everyone, like, we were like a family. Yeah. Right? So, it's school time. So, they don't have any, you know, uh, sometimes you're going to be best player, sometimes you just, you're not playing even. Mm -hmm. But they all together, they help each other. I think 
uh, we are here because of that yeah. the school time so we had more experience and our school uh, teachers and uh, most of the time our rectors in my college in St. Sebastian's College I want to uh, tell that so exactly because of that we are here yeah, yeah. I believe I would say like the team effort that we put into school exactly and you know that kick we got during school mm -hmm. oh she's a sportsman he's a sportsman yeah. he's but a basketball player school there. time is not yeah. the like we we are not professional basketball we all just like the same yeah right we don't have it uh, all just yeah. equality and all so i think that was the uh, good time mm. the best time in our i agree yeah. Yeah. because in school i feel like everyone's doing everything together and you don't have other commitments and it's just practice 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 exactly and i feel like you'll never get that time obviously that's true but yeah and did you ever feel like when you left school like everything just dropped all of a sudden or did you still have the same opportunity available out of school um i feel like it dropped a little bit obviously you're not going to get the same opportunities out of school it's not the same team that you played from grade 3 on until a levels so you know that combination yeah. i feel like is very and difficult after a levels most of the guys are except rigard they are not going to continue with them all because they know lack of the opportunities in the uh, our country yeah like for example i am a basketball player so in my age, like uh, on the 19 team, like most of the players didn't continue because of the lack of opportunities mm -hmm. in basketball. I'm not telling but there are no opportunities. There are, but limited opportunities we have. Sure. That's what I think. So you're telling the time you were in school, you all took the maximum out of you know being yeah. a sports person. Definitely. Yeah. Like I've seen like look, so many students. I'm pretty sure you all have would have done this as well. Like not just one sport. They are engaging in almost every sport. Yeah possible and you know it's it was difficult to juggle with your studies yeah. but now when you step out of school now if have you ever had a dream of becoming a national player when you were in school actually it's like this um, I didn't have uh, I didn't have I, I didn't think even I have a opportunity to play for national team because you know why because I had a my main dream was how I'm going to play for under 19 Sri Lanka team that was the first objective I had. So after that, when I selected to uh, under 19 Sri Lanka team, so I just realized, okay, there are more opportunities in national team also. But you should struggle. Mm -hmm. That is obvious, right? National selection is not easy. Like there are so many uh, barriers. So, and the more competitive. So what I thought like first under 19 Sri Lanka team, then we can uh, try for uh, national team. That's what I thought. Okay, so as a professional basketball player, what was the main challenges that you faced, like when you're applying for the national pool? National pool, you know, the competitor competition is there. Like it, it, that is not like uh, school time. All over the, uh, you know, everywhere like uh, Colombo district, uh, Jaffna district, everywhere. Just all the players just participating, and everyone just trying to uh, selected for national team. So uh, most of the time, uh, transport problems and not like this, no, those this. So we have to come all the way to Colombo and stay here, and so we have to find somewhere to eat. Yeah. Then <laughs> evening practice, no, like no hotels and all. No, we sometimes we just sleep. I we were sleeping on the uh, basketball court. So until uh, in the evening practice. So those are the barriers. But we actually we we all just. Uh, uh, going through it. Yeah. yeah. Come to think of it though, like it was fun in a way also, right? When you have yeah. to sleep with the basketball yeah. Yeah. with your it's definitely. an experience. Yeah. <laughs> like people would play games or you know, tell their stories about each other, maybe yeah. have a you know small chit chat along exactly. with your lunches and everything. That's right. But I would say like becoming a sports person you need to have that privilege also to experience that in a way. But do you think that our local Lankan people are willing to go through that struggle in order to become the sports person? Um, well, my opinion on that, uh, to tell you, so I feel like it depends on what you're willing to give in because I know for a fact that there's a lot of good players from school who haven't stepped out to that national level or even given themselves the chance to try um, because so most of them go abroad for studies right so that's their next step after school so I feel like those players never get the chance to um, try out for nationals even 
So that's my take on that. Um, what do you mean? Like, do you think that the opportunity is not created for them? No, it's not that. It's just that if they had to pick between going for a national tryout or going abroad for studies, a lot of them would take that opportunity. This happens a lot in international schools. I know that for a fact. Um, but yeah, I feel like we're losing out on a lot of good players because of that, because they're going abroad for studies. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But do you think that is it because the opportunities which are not available here in Sri Lanka and the prominence given to sports people here? Because even like parents, I've seen like them discouraging people. No, I don't think you should become a national player because you can't create a career out of it. Yeah, you know it can be true in a way. But why do you think that it's the case? I well, to be honest, when it comes to most sports, it can be a little biased their decisions. So maybe that might have happened to people in the past and maybe that's why they don't want to try again. Um, and I feel like uh, usually it's like a lot of youngsters aren't given the opportunity. That's my personal opinion on that. I've seen it happen um, and um, I feel like it's always the, the same team that People are used to, people with experience, but the thing is if you don't give a young person the opportunity, that person can never build that career, never build that or get that exposure, right? So I feel like that happens a lot here. Yeah. Isuru, with your experience, how can you describe the growth of the sports industry here in Sri Lanka? Like when you started off and where is it now? Like uh, we, like in Sri Lanka, we have improved a lot. The whole sports industry not like cricket because I'm not I'm just emphasizing cricket like cricket is uh, up to some certain mm -hmm. level so if you can improve other sports also the same level so I think we have more opportunities yeah. not as you said uh, she uh, she said a good um, thing like international schools what they are doing is after A levels they are not going to stay here they all just trying to uh, go for a, mm -hmm. another country and uh, improve themselves studies and uh, sports yeah. you know the, the first thing we have to do is sports plus, plus professional qualification we should develop that's one so we all just start our professional career uh, with the uh, uh, our professional you know academic. Uh, like the academic yeah so what I believe we have to uh, we have to develop professional qualifications plus, plus sports yeah what I believe as she said. I feel like all sports need to be funded equally. That's yeah. right. Because like you also mentioned cricket is like the happening sport and then it's a little difficult for a couple sports to get through to go for competitions and stuff like that. I feel because like Because you know why? Yeah. Like cricket, all the players just fighting until 25, mm. 26 because they know once you just uh, come to Sri Lanka team, done. Yeah. You are done. So you don't want to like, you know, you don't want to do any other jobs. So you can do cricket full time. But other sports not like that. No? Yeah. Like you should uh, do your work uh, and the sports. Sometimes we just going for a morning practice, go back to office yeah, and uh, come for practices in the evening. I don't know. In my office, they have given me the for like last 19 years. They have given me the full freedom, like not other 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 company i'm not telling they are not but we have some restrictions mm -hmm. what i believe is we have to get the sports up to that level yeah all right uh Sajali, when you joined the mercantile yeah. basketball team did you see a difference between the time you engaged from school and up until now um well to be honest i feel like um we don't have a lot of practice as much as we had in school uh, and well, being the captain at the company, I feel like uh, it's a little difficult. It's actually a lot tough to get everyone together for practice yeah, because right. they all have their personal commitments and then work commitments. And some of us are working on shifts, so that wasn't the issue in school. So, yeah, that's one of the biggest struggles we have at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Isra, you told us that, you know, Academics plays a, a big role when people think of self-development and you know growing yourself. Do you think a person without the passion for sports should enter a career? Let's say, uh, for example, an individual is good at the sport, yeah. but this person is not passionate about doing it. Would you encourage that person to still do it? 
like sports and uh, professional. Yeah, follow the career in sports. Yes, there are some opportunities you can do. What I told uh, told was just like if you have some qualifications like uh, professional qualifications plus sports, it's gonna be a uh, you know it's gonna be a valid addition. Mm -hmm. Like for example, uh, Kumar Sangakka. Yeah. Right. He has all the education qualifications plus he was a good cricketer. Still now he's doing motivational programs and all because he has that skill. So you have to develop two three skills within yourself. Sometimes I'm good at basketball, but I don't know. Uh, I can do some uh, other things as well. So I we can motivate people to do more sports. We can get more people into it. So what I believe you have to that. So what we have to do, what I what I believe we have to uh, educate them. Yeah. Like other countries, you know, the, the, some other countries. If you are a professional basketball player, but you have to have uh, higher high studies as well. That's right. Exactly. No? Mm -hmm. So you should have at least. Then, if you educated, you know how to keep your uh, profession professionalism uh, continuous. But I believe that. Yeah. Okay. We have to go into a short commercial break. Uh, we will be continuing this discussion right after that. You're watching Gen X Y Z, and we'll be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we were in discussion with Sajali Hetia Rachi and Isuru Pereira. I think you guys gave a good uh, introduction to what you all went through during school and now what you all are doing currently at the moment and where Sri Lanka stands also. Uh, but I want to know something interesting. What was the most memorable thing uh, for you all while being a sportsman? Um, well, I feel like every game is a memorable one you'll obviously remember it right um, but if I were to pick one it would definitely be a moment back in school when I got the award for the best defensive player mm -hmm. uh, and our team actually emerged champions that year so that was I think back in like 2018 mm -hmm. yeah so that's the one that stuck with me up until now Great. What about you, Isuru? For me, uh, we won uh, South Asian Games uh, silver medal after I think more than uh, 30 to 40 years in Sri Lanka. So we uh, we were uh, training more than six months. Uh, we didn't think even we can get the silver medal in uh, Nepal. So with the the other thing is with the weather, it was so cold and uh, we finally we won. Isn't there like any interesting incidents which are, which happened to y'all during the game that y'all can share? Like you know, as I uh, told you, the weather we are not uh, used to it. Play under uh, that weather, we don't have that. Like so cold, you can't just imagine how the bar. We, in, in Sri Lanka, we don't have weather problems, right? So we used to play in Indo basketball court in Sukhothadasa or the Apos court. We don't have that much of uh, weather inside. So and the outdoor court as well, but uh, that that time was so you know like uh, it's so memorable. Yeah. Any difficulties that you had while playing netball? While playing netball, um, a difficulty would definitely be our players getting injured during the game. I know it's not a very uh, like it's not a rough sport. There's no contact, but there are chances where people get really bad injuries um, and um, so if you do get injured during a game this is actually a rule of the sport uh, the injured player needs to go and tell the like ask the ref for a timeout so sometimes if that person was unconscious or something like that they'd still play on so those kind of things uh, they are nightmare basically <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I've had experiences where my teammates, I also used to play basketball back in the day. Okay. And when my teammates got injured, I've seen like so many people just going out there with the injury itself. And that's the time where you don't, you forget about the pain everything, and everything. Yeah. You just want to get in there and you know, it's just the yeah. sport, the yeah. love for the School sport. School time, yeah. we never stop playing. Exactly. On, like, you know, even mm. with the injuries and all, we just like to, we love to continue. Yeah. We don't want to give chance to others. 
Sometimes there have been instances where the doctors and nurses come and no, you can't play. If you yeah. play, you won't be yeah. able to play forever. Yeah. That's actually sad though, yeah. like when you get an injury. Especially. As we earlier, uh, we were talking about it, that's the difference be between uh, professional basketball and the school time. School time, yeah. School time, nobody's, uh, you know, we are not paying for the school, that's yeah. all. In professional, you are just main focus, money, all right. That's all. So, do you think it's still like that? Like when you have, now when you're in the national pool, you're also playing for the mercantile team also. Do you think that the spirit, team spirit that y'all had during school is completely different to the teams that y'all are having now? It is different. I feel like, like I said, you're never going to get your school time again or that team or that momentum, that, you know, combination. You're never going to find it anywhere else. Um, but with a bit of hard work and like team building skills and everything, it's possible to achieve it. But currently, because I'm playing for a company, with everyone's work schedule, it's it's a little tough to get everyone together in the same place. That's the uh, one, um, well... A challenge. Yeah, a challenge, I'd say. Okay. So, when considering a team game, now there are individual games as well. I believe that, uh, Isuru, you're doing bodybuilding as well, and that's also a sport. Yeah, actually, I do as a passion, the bodybuilding. Like, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was planning to start bodybuilding, when we were having uh, the corona time, we couldn't play, we couldn't go to basketball court and all. Actually, I was so depressed when I was uh, stay at home. So I was like, we uh, we have a uh, gym nearby house. So we were planning to start, you know, go there and do some workout. And then I realized I can do bodybuilding as well. <laughs> so I started uh, that time. So it's a it's a sport, but it's so difficult. It's so difficult. I'm just telling you, uh, commitment and like There's once a lot you of come in exactly. That. Yeah. Once you come to prep, you can't eat anything but you like, right? No sweets. Stop sugar zero, right? Sometimes we stop water, depend on your body uh, dryness. We, we should stop that level. It's so difficult. And the training part, sometimes we just do a training in the morning and after three meals we have to go to gym again and do workout, right? Sometimes in the morning, like, you have to do fasted cardio as well. Like 20 minutes, empty stomach, water zero, no food at all. 20 minutes uh, on treadmill or plus trainer. It's so difficult. That sounds tough. But once you come to bodybuilding, so you are in fit. So you have that um, mentality. So Matt, what made you want to go through all of that? Because you know, uh, like I'm a sportsman. I realized I can do it. First week it was so damn right. Like, <laughs> I, I, first week, second week I wanted to stop. But I thought I'm just going to pass two, three weeks, then I'm going to start it again. So just the, the problem is sugar. Like we used to eat chocolate and whatever we like, right? Ice cream and all. Like you can't eat, not even uh, you can't put sugar into your uh, tea or coffee. I, oh, that's it's that bad. Okay, I know for a fact that I won't be able to do that. Because for me, like after a few exercises, I am dead hungry. Yeah. I mean, I need the food. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, as soon as you both uh, left school, what was the next step that you all took in order to pursue your career in sports? So, for me, um, I was in the junior national pool at the time uh, in 2018 and 2019 so then I the step right after school for me was to join some place that I can play I can continue playing and that is why I uh, joined Ceylon Bank because they're an A division team and I used to be there uh, so yeah that was the step right after school for me okay yeah. so after that you kept looking for on for other firms other wherever firms. you can yeah. play. Did you uh, did it ever consider to you to join a club or something? Uh, so that's the other thing about our country. So we don't have many netball clubs here. I feel like maybe that would have been the reason where, why netball isn't much of a popular sport. Yeah, because you'll have to either join forces or join a bank if you want to play professionally. So yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Again, mm -hmm. the opportunity is not available not here available. in Sri Lanka. Isuru, what about you? What did you yeah, do? Yeah, uh, 
it's like this but after school time you know in my, uh, my school is in sebastian's college moratua earlier christ king college in uh, tudella so after under 19 team uh, I, luckily i had a uh, invitation from um, uh, otters aquatic club a division club so i was playing with them then i moved to um, you know avangard sports club then back to this club uh, uh, father club so uh, in basketball also there are more opportunities like if you want to play um, national team you should f- find a find a a division or the b division club so i i will i am i'm lucky because all three clubs are playing uh, a division so uh, it uh, it's uh, like it's it was a great opportunity for me to participate in national team as well after school time sajini now you being a mercantile player do you think would you advise anyone to spend their time and effort on sports like considering the fact that you all have to work and with your personal duties as well well it actually depends on how much you're willing to give in and if you're passionate i feel like you will go that extra mile and do it um because i know a couple people who have who have kids who have a family to go back to and all of that all those household duties but still after work they will find time to come practice or even before work they would go and keep themselves fit they'll hit the gym but it really def- uh, d- depends on the effort that you're willing to put in do you think it's worth it now let's say you have the passion to do so but what if you don't get any return out of it you don't have the platform to showcase the talent yeah well when it comes to that obviously you're going to be a little demotivated but i feel like it's a mind game and you need to prepare yourself mentally to um you know pull yourself out of bed go for practice no matter you win or lose you know it's a team sport so if you drop out you're letting down your team right so i feel like if you kept those things in mind you can motivate yourself to go for practice and to you know make a change and stuff like that but um yeah like i said it's a mind game completely have you all both uh, uh, participated in individual games now i know bodybuilding is an yeah. individual game yeah Have um you? some time ago when i was in school i used to be an athlete so yeah so with that experience do you all think that it's easier to play in a team game or individual sport like team game when you play t- like when you into team right you you have more experience like you know how to stay with a team uh, it's it's going to be a family yeah. no individual things in the within the team so um, i believe that like you can do uh, individual sports as well i also used to do high jump long jump and uh, sprints as well yeah. but i believe once you come to team game it's like a, you know like so you can um, you can develop your personality yeah mainly that's what you represent after school yeah. so i uh, team game is uh, compared with individual games team games is uh, so good i think yeah eventually you start to think about not only yourself but from like the team's point of view i feel like that was what i went through from from athletics to netball it was too different and i was aware that you can't shine on your own when it comes to a team sport um but i really liked it i like being with a crowd and being with the team and yeah it was good <laughs> okay is there uh, now you being a coach how can you describe the young people the talent available here in sri lanka right now yeah. because earlier in the day we can see like yes our grandparents our parents or whatever they played netball basketball some were swimmers some did archery you know yeah. some sport sort of sport like they were engaged in but right now i have seen like people like young children engaging in sports in school even yeah. have decreased like it's not because they don't have the opportunity in school it's just that they are not aware i think about the satisfaction they can get and what they can learn out of it so as a coach how can you describe the engagement of young people in sport it's like this as you said uh, we have talents we have skills the problem is what i believe they are more into devices right more into devices those days we didn't have mobile phones uh, tabs laptops uh, maximum we had only cartoons in the tv so actually it, that also after 5:30 like after school what we just 
uh, going to ground, just play cricket or something else. Then uh, if I'm play basketball, we have to go basketball practice. Then we come back to come back uh, come back to home. Just do our homework. Then in the morning also we have practices. So we don't we didn't have anything to do, uh, do else, like like you know uh, either uh, homework or practices. The problem is we have to avoid those things. Even parents they have to encourage um, their children just at least uh, I'm recommending just like at least do two three sports. Then you don't have time to uh, stay with devices. That's true. That Always is a take yourself off your exactly. Exactly. That's what you have to do. At least do two, three sports. Then he's he or he or she, they just occupy with it. Yeah. Then you don't have time to do social media or YouTube or whatever. That's what. Talents are there, skills are there, more capable than earlier. But I believe. So you you should start from the, uh, you know, from the home. And I feel like sports go hand in hand. So like. Being a netball player, it's okay to do something like athletics or even basketball because basketball yeah. is a contact sport. So then you get tough when you come to play netball. And with athletics, you you train on your speed, right? So I feel like athletics is a sport that helps with every other sport. So they go hand and in hand you, together. Sorry, if you if if they want to learn, they have everything. You can Google anything. YouTube. If you want to know about those things, even basketball, anything, you name it all there you can learn right it's, it's so easy the problem is they don't use it that's a problem no yeah do you think now as a coach now you're coaching schools also yeah have you ha ever had to encounter with the uh, young people from the rural areas who are playing sports do you see any difference there like people who are in Colombo and uh, the people who are in the rural area like uh, uh, the talent, talent wise. Sorry. The talent wise. No, nothing. There are nothing like that, because all the people like same, same skills, same talent. The rural area. The only problem is um, they don't have more opportunities. In Colombo, they have. Yeah. Right. If you want to play basketball, basketball, so you can find basketball court and play. In rural area, sometimes they don't have don't even basketball court in the school. Yeah. Right. Any sport in Colombo like uh, raga, basketball, any other thing, in, in, even gyms, how many gyms are there? So that's the problem. The, the talents are there. Okay. So in the next segment, we are reaching our final segment also. In that, I want to get your ideas about whether you would encourage young people to do sports and the, uh, the pathways available right now and what we as a nation are doing wrong. Okay. But before that, we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen X Rising. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and this is our last uh, 15 minutes with these two and uh, to end of our session I want you to give your experience and knowledge for the youngsters who are watching this program and the people who want to really pursue a career out of sports and you know pursue their passion. Uh, why do you think they have the opportunity in order to enroll themselves and would you advise them to follow their passion in career in Sri Lanka? Well, um, so when it comes to netball, I feel like there's more opportunities abroad. Um, I'm, well, in many universities, they give you sports scholarships. And I feel like a lot of people aim at those sort of opportunities. Um, but in Sri Lanka, like I said, we don't have a lot of clubs to play for. Um, and even if there was, you can't really build a professional career out of it because they're not paying clubs. Um, or like if you are considering, uh, you know, doing your studies hand in hand, working and playing, you should either join a bank or forces to get there, to get onto a professional level. Mm -hmm. So you being in the mercantile team also, yeah. you are just doing this because of your passion? Yeah, I am. Okay. Isuru, what do you think? Would you advise anyone? Yes, it's like this, um, in basketball, uh, in uh, other countries, uh, there are opportunities, but we have to think like 
how they have recognized basketball uh, in national basketball in sri lanka how they are going to recognize other countries like what i think um, basketball opportunity has they are a bit tough right so what i have recommend them they have to have proper uh, plan how they are going to finish basketball here and once they move to other country they have to find opportunity from the uh, level 1 so what uh, they they have to play well here and if they don't want to go abroad and all so they can settle here with the basketball because you know why uh, there are so many opportunities in mercantile sector yeah. right uh, as we did uh, there are opportunities and coaching and training and personal training of basketball there are so many guys are doing personal training of basketball those days we didn't have right only school uh, practices and the national practices and the club practices that's all we had you know now they just um, uh, promoting in uh, uh, you know instagram facebook and all this the, you can earn something yeah. right so uh, but what i can tell the uh, the sport is mandatory sport is mandatory to have any other sports like basketball cricket uh, the other sports as well that's what i think Okay, now y'all have been talking about team sports. No, no, there are so many other sports here also, and uh, I would say like in Sri Lanka, there are so many talented individuals also. If we consider archery or swimming or volleyball, which is our national sport also, and um, even athletics, like we have people taking part for Olympics also. So we have the talent, we have that endurance, we have that passion also. It's just that you know. I feel like Sri Lanka is not giving the right prominence mm-hmm. that for our sports persons. Yeah. So, do you think like for other sports also, would you advise anyone to travel abroad and pursue their career? Yes, of course, definitely. Because, uh, for example, uh, like cricket here, the more uh, prominent, and uh, every parents is like uh, they like to their children just play uh, cricket, not like other sports, right? Yeah. So we, if like, if you are not pro, if you are not promoting to go abroad and uh, do their career, so we uh, like we have to develop other sports as well here, mm-hmm. right? So as as earlier said, talents are here. Yeah. The problem is how we are going to develop sport like cricket. We right? lack a bit of the resources yeah. to get there yeah. to give exactly. prominence to people in rural areas. There's a lot of talented individuals. I think lack of the promoting and. Uh, like we have to share the knowledge with uh, other people the rural areas like we we easily we can develop mm-hmm. so basketball also only few clubs are just dominating in basketball we have to uh, into uh, rural area as well like cricket we have to pump more money to other sports i have uh, come across young individuals who are traveling abroad just to pursue their career especially in racing uh, and also archery as well uh, do you think that this is going to be a disadvantage for sri lanka i feel like it might be in the long run because if those people find opportunities elsewhere and obviously with the economic crisis and all that um, they'll obviously settle for better abroad and there's vast opportunities there there's a lot of things so like they can study while doing their sport which is a really good thing and here the thing is now like we were talking early on with work it's one of your responsibilities so you might not have time to go for practice and all of that but there i feel like people will make time accordingly to you know do everything simultaneously yeah as she said um, like the other sports right as you said uh, we are like how we are going to pump money and how we are going to develop them it's all about career yeah. right it's all about career so how we are going to develop them how we are going to uh, like you know the uh, how we are going to give the guarantee once you hear the, this is your career exactly like if you don't see uh, your future here staying future here so you are not going to uh, stay you are planning to go out every single time So those are our talents, right? That's right. So, Isuru, you being a national player, what sort of support did you receive in order to get into the pool? I'm pretty sure you would have faced so many challenges and drama as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's industry. like this. In national team, also, uh, like for me, it's a it's a good opportunity. Uh, I'm here because of uh, basketball, 
right? Because of my school, St. Sebastian's College, because of my family, right? But once you come to nationality, what's next? Financially, what's next? Yeah. Are you going to earn something? Because as you say, as I said, I'm lucky because of my company, Fair First Insurance. They're supporting like, you know, like a freedom, money-wise. That's what I'm doing. I'm so lucky uh, with this company. That's what I, I'm staying with. Uh, I'm working here last 18 years. So, like, if you are just uh, with that company, yeah, you are okay. But in national team also, they need more funds, more sponsorship, sponsorships and all. So I think uh, money-wise, there's no um, f uh, future in uh, national team in basketball. But I believe. Okay. What about you, Sajali? Now you are in the mercantile team also. Yeah. Do you think that you have any advantage of being in that? Well, in the long financial run, financial wise. Yeah, yeah, in the long run, I'm not too sure about it um, because I still have so many more years to play. Um, but like he said, I feel like they're not pumping enough money for other sports. Cricket has been given the main prominence. Um, but that shouldn't be the case because it's not just cricket that's gonna develop, you know. If in future, if cricket fails, then there has to be another sport to come up, right? So there's a lot of talent around here, just that we're not given the right resources. Sometimes it's really difficult booking a court for tournaments and tournaments have got postponed because of that reason. So things like that, little things like that, that can be fixed, that can be made better, just that you know, it doesn't happen easily. I think it's happening because, um, you know, cricket is uh, yes, competitive. But cricket is not competitive like other sports. Yeah. In here, cricket is prominent. But other countries, some countries, they don't know about cricket. Yeah, exactly. But here, cricket is uh, important because other sports just like it's struggling. Sure. Right? So, I think that's the main issue, issue and we have to develop other sports up to uh, level. Yeah. Then we can go uh, higher level. Right. If both of y'all were given the opportunity to pursue a career in the sport that you love to do in another country, would y'all take it? I might definitely go with that option. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Isiru? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That's because we don't Because I love it. my country. Uh -huh. I have gained everything from here. I have learned everything. Uh, my, my everything. But you know, you every single time, just you are just looking for another opportunity. Mm -hmm. So even if you go abroad, would you still be participating, representing our country? Yes. Definitely. Tell me something about uh, the tournament which is coming up in a few months time, uh, the Mr. Sri Lanka Bodybuilding Commission. Yeah, you have been uh, training for that also? Yeah, because as I told you, I'm also in bodybuilding now and Mr. Sri Lanka uh, physics category also coming in uh, uh, mid of August. I'm just getting ready for it and uh, it's, uh, you know, I have to uh, give effort and I'm um, just planning to do something. Alright, so we have to end off our session as well. Before we end, I want you to give a little advice to the young people who are watching this program in um, a few steps that they need to keep in mind before joining the sports industry here in Sri Lanka. Financial wise, what they need to consider before joining the sport, opportunity wise, the investment that they have to make and the time also. What can you say about that? Yeah, so um, if you're still in school, I feel like, uh, like Isuru said, you can do multiple sports. That really helps you, that keeps you busy and um, might have to give up a little bit of screen time, which is very healthy. So yeah, basically do a lot of sports when you're in school because that's the only time that you can, that's the only time you can, um, you know, allocate your time for it. And uh, when it comes to work and when you have to do your sport there as well, uh, basically it just just go with the flow and everything falls in place. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Isaro? Uh, what I can recommend uh, the commitment, discipline, and uh, you have to have objective, right? So once you come to under 15 team, like school time, right? Under 15 team, 17 team, you should have objective what is next if you are into a uh, sport like for a basketball for basketball so you have to have then what is the next step like Sri Lanka school basketball so then you have to focus on it and as you said we you have to 
keep more time for practicing. Pra forget about the device. You should have, you should uh, use the devices, but uh, give more, limited and give more time for the practices and all. So, but I believe uh, that. What can you both say about the struggle? Because now in school, you have the opportunity av available. Your coaches and teachers are just giving you, okay, there's a tournament like this coming up, you need to be prepared for this. They fix up times for practice and the scheduling to the meals to everything. But when you step out of school, it's you have to go headhunting in order to find your competitions, uh, enroll yourself in a team or a club or anything. So the struggle-wise, what do you think mentally a young sportsman should be prepared for? Um, so basically, after school, if you are taking part in, like, let's say, a junior national competition, so when they have selections for those kind of things, they obviously don't advertise it as much as you'd want them to. That's so right. you need to keep in touch with those coaches from school and um, maybe people who you know who are in that, um, in that sport. So that's basically how I did it when I, was, when I had just left school. And right now it's just the contacts, you know, your coaches, right. your friends, people you've met through the sport, who will give you that information. Yeah, so it's just a small pool. If you don't yeah. have the contact, you basically don't exactly. even know you what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So Isuru, what about you? Yeah, uh, like, first thing is after school you have to find a good club, right? You, you have to find a playing time. Then you will be highlighted. Yeah. Right? Or the mercantile uh, sector, like A division or B division, you have to find a uh, uh, sports plus uh, work. So then uh, you can automatically, when you play A division basketball, mercantile sector through or the uh, club uh, clubs. So then I think there are more opportunities. I think you have to find a good club or the mercantile, mercantile sector after school. That's all. Okay. Final question. Do you think? Becoming a sports person, a national player, or pursuing your career in another country, do you think it's a viable career for anybody to follow? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I mean, so far, I've not had like major downs, but I think it's really important to keep in touch with sport. It's healthy for you, first thing. And um, you, you start to realize a lot about yourself when you're just constantly pushing your limits. Yeah. And it go, it, it's really good to be in touch with the sport that you're doing. Yeah, because there's the stigma also around, you know, Sri Lankan parents are saying, no, it's no point you doing sports, you yeah. can't earn anything out of it, it's you better to be just become... You can't be a out of it. Yeah. You can't you, say like that. Mm -hmm. So you had with sport until you die. Yeah. But I <laughs> So you would advise anybody to follow sports as a career? Yeah. Until you die. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. This is all the time we have on the program and okay. I wish you all the very best in this career as well and for the upcoming tournament as well Thank with you. you. And also Sajali, uh, congratulations by being the captain also for Thank this you. year. Thank and you very much for inviting us. It was <laughs> just nice meeting you both. You Thank too. you so Thank much. Thank you. Alright, that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another topic or issue based on the youth. Just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night. <laughs>